Hi there everyone. Right, I thought I'd do um, a video, um, a quick video on how I po post process the output from the uh, Cyclop 3D scanner which is a point cloud. Um, a point cloud as the name suggests is just a, a, an array of points in space that have been, in this case, uh, they have colour because we scanned with texture. Um, you can't 3D print that because it's not a solid object, it's not an object at all, it's not even a surface, it's just points. So the tool I use uh, for doing the conversion is MeshLab. Uh, I can't, um, I won't, you know, I can't admit to knowing or have even scratched the surface of MeshLab. It's an extremely comprehensive pro program. I use uh, what I need, and then if I need to do something else, I find out how to do it. That's that sort of simple. So if I take my output from the scanner, which is Avacan PLY dot PLY, which is a point cloud. Okay. That's it. So it's kind of cool. You can see it's what we scanned. And it looks like a surface, but it's not. And it's hollow. And if you zoom in, you see exactly what we saw when we were scanning. So you all these vertical chains of points which have got color. So it's, yeah, it's just an array of points in space. It's not, not something you can print. So the first thing we need to do in order to convert this is we need to calculate the normals of the points or point normal calculation it sounds complicated but it isn't once you know where to look so it, doing this seems to be the um, first stage of any sort of um, point cloud processing so we go to filters point set and then the third option down is compute normals for point sets select that comes up with a dialog box which default the only number we need to twiddle here is a uh, neighbor number which defaults to 10 so I'll show you what happens if you do that, use the default. So we apply that, calc calculates it really quickly, and it appears to have done nothing. It has calculated the normals, just that we can't see them. So you go to render, uh, and then show normal stroke curve. And we've calculated normal, so there you go. Now it seems to have filled the inside of the can with like blue fur. Those are a, a visualization of the normals that it's calculated from the point cloud. Uh, the little tricky problem here is it's because we've used the defaults, it's calculated normals and they're all pointing inwards. What's going to happen if we calculate a solid mesh from that is it's going to turn this turn the whole thing inside out and we're going to end up with the we're going to end up with a mesh on the outside of the point cloud and what we want it is in the inside to fill it up. So I found through trial and error that a value of 90 sort of works quite well, 90 something. So I, I generally set this neighbor number to 100 and hit apply again. And now we've got the normals on the outside of the point cloud, which is where we want them. So we can kill that and we can turn off the visualization because we don't need that anymore. They're still there, we just can't see them. And now we need to um, actually generate the solid mesh. If you go to filters, there's, there's often duplication within MeshLab. Um, so if, for example, if you go to remesh and simplification and reconstruction, you'll see, you'll find surface reconstruction Poisson about two thirds of the way down. But also if you go to point set, which is where we were before, at the bottom, you've also got surface re reconstruction Poisson. It's the same menu. So that pops up. Now the only things we need to twiddle here are octree depth and solver divide. Now they default to 6 and 6. Um, if you've got a fairly pedestrian machine then values of 8 and 8 work quite well. This is an i7 machine with like a shed load of memory. So I, I tend to pick 10 and 8 and apply. It will go off and have a think um, for 10-15 seconds. I'd have a sip of my tea if I had any tea. So give it a little time to crunch the numbers. Hopefully it won't go crazy should be almost done by now. Ta -da! So there we go, it seems to have like, it looks like it's almost filled the entire can with plaster of Paris. Um, it's easier to visualize actually if we go up here and turn on layer dialog. Let that pop back up. Layer dialog, we've, got, we've now got the original Avacam PLY and we've also got a Poisson mesh if we turn off both, obviously now we can't see anything because no layers are turned on. So there's our original, there's our original point cloud, and there is now our sort of solid 
insides. If we turn both on, obviously the one superimposed on the other. So let's turn off the original point cloud. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to move the color from the point cloud onto the mesh. Um, there's a really cool way of doing that. Uh, it's really easy to do under filters, if I can remember where it is. Uh, under sampling, second from the bottom is an uh, option called vertex attribute transfer. And it comes up with this box here. And basically what this allows you to do is move the attributes of one layer onto the onto the onto another layer and there's all these different attributes you can move transfer geometry normal color quality selection and the one at the bottom I don't know what it does so you pick your source which is our AvaCan PLA PLA PLY source mesh and the target mesh which is the this solid object here we've just created the press on mesh we've hit transfer color and we hit apply it's done it you think well it hasn't worked that's because we've not turned on the visualization for this so if you go to view no if you go to render color and then per vertex color so render color per vertex and voila so we can actually delete the um, point cloud so we've deleted now the point cloud and now what we're left with is a solid printable structure which has got color on it. Now I know from a 3D, point of, 3D printing point of view the color is not going to be particularly useful, of no use in fact. But you know, I thought to myself, well you might want to use these scanned objects for something else, you know, part of some sort of animation or something like that. It might not be anything to do with 3D printing. So being able to transfer the color from the point cloud onto a solid object is quite useful. Now you notice obviously there's nothing on the top, it's white, and there's nothing on the bottom, it's white. Well obviously that's because there was no point cloud information because we didn't scan it. Um, so you have to do a bit more tidying. I mean I generally now move this, um, ex export this and then move it into something like uh, Blender or I tend to use Mesh Mixer and then you can kind of like slice the bottom off to make it square if you want to print it and you can slice the top off and then you can use um, you know the sculpting tools or various other tools in say mesh mixer to, to rebuild the, the lid in a way that you want it built and color it, color, color it in and how you want it colored um, so there's yeah there's more post processing to do here but the important bit is we've now got a solid printable object which has got color on it um, from a scan which is pretty cool anyway um, I hope that was helpful if you've got any questions then fire away um, I'll try and answer them or just do the usual Google search on, on MeshLab and whatever you want to do and then just try and unra unravel it all. Cheers.